Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Wednesday, April 20th. The Gospel passage for today's Daily Mass comes to us from the 24th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. It reads, That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had happened. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to him, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was sitting at table with them, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open; they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he is made known to them in the breaking of the bread. One of the many miracles in today's scripture passage was the reality that the disciples were changed people. They began the passage struggling with doubt and fear and anxiety about Jesus Christ. And at the end, they're immediately on fire to go back to Jerusalem and tell the fellow, their fellow disciples that Jesus was arisen, he was alive, and that he explained everything to them. So this road to Emmaus shows that huge transformations can happen in our lives. And I think especially when we acknowledge the breaking of the bread at the end of this passage shows forth the power of the Eucharist. That you and I, every time we're able to participate in Mass and celebrate the Eucharist, we have the ability to receive grace upon grace from our Lord and seek the power of transformation that comes from this sacrament. That when we go to Mass, we bring our problems, our concerns, but Jesus meets us in our need literally gives us himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity and the graces we need to go back out and to deal, but also to trust that our lives, though difficult, the Lord is with us in our journey to help us and support us. But also I think this passage is a good reminder that Jesus is always on the road of life with us. That yes, at moments we do feel as if we may be alone or that our expectations will never be met. But Christ is walking with us. 
He is guiding us. And we just need the eyes of faith to see this reality and to trust in it more. So from the Eucharist to our parish families, to our individual prayer, whatever it is, these realities are times and opportunities to remind ourselves that we are not alone in our faith journey, that Christ is always walking with us to help us and to guide us. And we, for our part, just need to be like the disciples in today's gospel passage and keep hearts and minds open to what Christ is saying to us, especially as we receive the Eucharist. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.